Let's check it out because a Bitcoin ETF is overdue. And according to a new report from the Chamber of Digital Commerce, the D.C. based crypto lobbying group, they're pointing the finger at the SEC for depriving investors from the type of trading vehicle already available in other countries. Joining us now, we have Perry Ann Boring. She's the founder and president of the Chamber of Digital Commerce. Welcome to the show, Perry Ann. Thanks so much. Great to be here with you in person. Yes, great to have you in the studio. So tell us about this report and why your organization Commissioned it, commissioned it in the first place? So we think it's important to have regulated products that allow investors to have access to Bitcoin directly. Um, crypto is an interesting and a new and a novel asset class. One thing that makes digital assets unique is that there's a lot of retail involvement. It's estimated that as many as 41 million Americans own cryptocurrency today. So there's a lot of demand and it's coming from retail, but it's somewhat of a less understood asset class. There's also new and novel risk to investing in cryptocurrencies, especially related to custody. And people have had a lot of missteps. Um, we, we found a study where they estimate up to maybe 23% of Bitcoin in circulation is locked in wallets that people lost the keys to. So clearly there's, uh, there, there's challenges here. Um, a spot Bitcoin ETF would mitigate a lot of these risks in, in a big way. So our report, The Crypto Conundrum, really outlines you know, why don't we have a, a spot Bitcoin ETF? Because it's truly a conundrum to me why you have calls from policymakers, including the SEC, to have increased investor protections, yet they're blocked blocking one of the most effective ways to give retail investors access to Bitcoin through a regulated product. Well, one of the consistent reasons they have, the SEC has cited that they do not want a Bitcoin spot ETF just yet in the United States is that they're concerned with market manipulation and on all the applications, they've not been satisfied that organizations have sufficiently addressed this issue. And so is that a valid concern? So that is the stated reason why the SEC has denied all of the applicants. There's been over 16 issuers that have tried to bring a Bitcoin ETF to market. Some of these are some of the most well-respected names in financial services. Um, that was what they said 10 years ago when the Winklevoss was the first um, group to try to get one through. There's been significant inst institutionalization and ways to address market manipulation over the past 10 years. More importantly, the SEC is imposing on our industry standards that are unique only to this space. So yes, they've stated they have concerns about market manipulation, but what it takes to over, overcome those concerns are not the same steps any other industry is having to take. So we believe that the SEC is discriminating against this asset class, holding it to a higher standard. And it's not just us that says this. SEC Commissioner Hester Peirce has stated that in her dissents. So we, we believe it is time to have a spot Bitcoin ETF now the SEC should not be picking winners and losers. They're a disclosure regulator, not a merit le regulator. And we're trying to bring awareness we'll to that. Well, say that they do hold the crypto industry to a different standard. How do you get over that hump? So it's likely going to either end up in litigation or Congress will have to take action. There's already litigation steps in place by Bitcoin ETF issuers. Congress can also step in. So part of our effort is to dig into this deeper, provide the industry and Congress with additional tools they'll need to be able to take those steps. Has SEC been clear in saying the industry won't see a spot Bitcoin ETF until there's a surveillance sharing agreement between a national securities exchange and a spot market of significant size? So that was what they originally said. So in 2013, when the Winklevoss applied for their ETF and the denials, they mentioned that having surveillance sharing agreements in place could satisfy the requirement. Of course, we got those when the CME launched Bitcoin futures contracts. They have sophisticated surveillance sh sharing agreements in place. So the industry tried again. And then they were told, well, that's not enough. You have to actually prove market manipulation is not happening. And the industry's done that as well. So we believe this really has very little to do with the industry 
not meeting some type of purported standard and more to do with the larger political agenda. Um, Chairman Gensler himself has testified in Congress uh, just last year. He said that if the Congress gave him authority over the Bitcoin markets, he would be more comfortable with bringing a Bitcoin ETF uh, uh, to be. Um, but please note, Bitcoin, it's not a security, it's a commodity. Even Chairman Gensler has acknowledged that. So again, there is this big conundrum as to why that would be the requirement to, to bring this to market. Again, the SEC is acting like a merit regulator. It is a disclosure regulator. It needs to get back in line with their mandate. Okay. So SEC Chair Gary Gensler spoke in various speeches the previous week. One of the things that he said was that crypto doesn't need any more guidance. And the Washington Post is reporting that the Treasury Department will issue reports noting more crypto regulation is needed to protect consumers. And back in May, you said that the SEC is the number one blocker to the industry. Has anything changed? We don't believe that the SEC has put forward the necessary guidance, our guardrails for businesses to be able to operate in this space. And the Bitcoin ETF blocking that is just one example of, of the SEC not putting forward um, you know, the necessary requirements for this industry to be able to come to market. They're holding this industry to a very different standard. And frankly, we think it's discriminatory. Um, this is one example. We've seen this in other issues as well at the SEC. Why do you think they are being discriminatory toward the crypto industry? Again, it's, it's part of a larger political agenda. So this is politics. And policymakers, Chair Gensler has been very clear that he wants his authority expanded. He wants Congress to give the SEC additional jurisdiction over the crypto space. He's called for that. Congress does have legislative proposals that they're weighing. Um, and he's holding things like the Bitcoin ETF hostage until he gets his way. Interesting. Other Topics that you're looking at that I found were interesting is accounting standards. So there's no real accounting standards in the crypto industry clear for institutions and even maybe retail investors to understand and follow. And so could you tell me a bit about what you're advocating in that regard? So we are advocating for digital asset accounting standards at fair market value. So because FASB, the Financial Accounting Standards Board, has not issued accounting standards for digital assets. Companies have to treat digital assets as an in intangible. That's very difficult for a company that's looking to put Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies on their balance sheet because if the value is ever impaired, they have to to mark their um, financial statements down. But if the value goes up, they can't mark them up. So it's held back, particularly institutional investors, from making allocations to this space. Um, the FASB has uh, announced that they are going to issue dedicated standards for crypto assets. So that was uh, a really great step forward. Um, we're hoping to have those standards done soon, and we're working closely with the FASB to support them in that effort. Would we ever see a time where, you know, accounting for crypto, it wouldn't be capital gains or, or treated as property? So at the IRS in 2014, um, they issued guidance saying cryptocurrencies would be um, taxed as property and subjected to capital gains. Um, there is no indication. Um, I don't think there's even really any efforts or conversations underway either at Congress or the IRS to change that. But one thing that is really interesting is when you have foreign nations accepting cryptocurrency as legal tender, it potentially could change the way um, it is taxed as a foreign currency, because now it is a foreign currency. So it's possible that will change and evolve as more, more countries are getting behind Bitcoin as a legal tender. Yeah, that is a very strange mix <laughs> to deal with. And um, we're looking at the Ethereum merge, and there has been questions or concerns about the regulatory ramifications of this. Do you see anything percolating in that regard going forward? So there have been some rumors that SEC Chairman Gensler is walking back statements that Ethereum is a commodity, not a security. I think that would be a massive mistake. Um, that would cause all sorts of issues for retail investors and everybody involved in the Ethereum community. So it's really too early uh, to tell if there'll be regulatory ramifications, but I, I don't believe there's a specific reason why, why there would be.
All right. Well, Perry Ann, you're speaking at the SALT conference this week at 11 a.m. Folks, if you want to check her out, the future of market structure is the panel she's moderating. Thank you so much for joining us in studio. Great to be here. All right. That's Perry Ann Voring. She's the Chamber of Digital Commerce founder and president. Coming